Chapter 41 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Show your respect after sending off the reluctant Tan family members, Wei Zhiqian brought Tan M.O. to the study. Dot, you can study here, Wei Zhiqian said as he pointed at his desk. His desk was quite large, with two chairs placed side by side. Tan M.O. held a chair and mumbled, Hey, 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 hey. She raised her short legs and tried to climb up the chair. However, after a few tries, she still could not climb up. The chair was too high for her. Tan Mo wanted to cry. She recalled the days when she used to be a little snow fairy, spending her days lazily underground. She had never exerted so much effort before. Being a human cub was too difficult. Puff. While Tan Mo was struggling with the chair, she suddenly heard a sneer. She quickly turned around and saw Wei Zhiqian with a hand on his mouth. But it didn't work. They were the only people in the study. Other than Wei Zhiqian, no one else could be laughing at her. Tan Mo's eyes welled up with tears. Sorry, I couldn't help it. Wei Zhiqian covered his mouth once more, but he could not hide the smile on his face. This little girl's actions were too funny. She was small and round. For a moment, he felt like he was watching a cub climb a chair. Currently, there is no suitable chair for you. They are too high for you, as well as the table, Wei Zhiqian explained as he carried Tan Mo to one of the chairs. The table was too high for Tan Mo. Only half of her nose up could be seen while sitting. Wei Zhiqian was speechless. The more he looked at this little girl, the cuter he felt she was. Uncle. Stop laughing. Tan Mo reached out with her small hands, trying to cover Wei Zhiqian's mouth that could no longer hide his smile. I'll grow taller very soon. Wei Zhiqian was bent over. When Tan Mo straightened her arm, she managed to reach his mouth and successfully covered it. Her palm was soft and smelled of milk. Wei Zhiqian remembered that Xiao Menghan gave Tan Mo a handful of milk candies after dinner. He wondered why a cute baby wasn't part of his family. Otherwise, he wouldn't have to compete with the Tan family for her attention. Why don't you study at the coffee table instead? Wei Zhiqian pointed at the coffee table not far away. The coffee table was low, which was quite suitable for Tan Mo. There was also a thick carpet on the floor. Wei Zhiqian asked someone to send in another cushion for Tan Mo. Tan Mo tried it out and it did fit perfectly. Hence, Tan Mo officially started her extracurricular studies with Wei Zhiqian. Wei Zhiqian found out that Tan Mo was indeed not talking big before. He taught her math tonight, and Tan Mo recalled all the formulas for the first grade. She only lacked practical application. Therefore, Wei Zhiqian skipped the discussions and directly let Tan Mo do math exercises. She would ask him whenever she encountered difficulties. While Tan Mo was doing the exercises, Wei Zhiqian was learning as well. Wei Zhiqian realized that he could also learn outside the traditional classroom. Asterisk 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 the next day after school, Tan Mo followed Wei Zhiqian to his car. They were heading to the Wei residence. Many people had seen Tan Mo get in Wei Zhiqian's car and leave with him. Actually, Wei Zhiqian did it on purpose. He wanted everyone to see that he was protecting Tan Mo. No one would dare to bully her henceforth. At that moment, a pair of jealous eyes stared closely at Wei Zhiqian's car leaving. Sister, why did Wei Zhiqian treat Tan Mo so well? Qin Muxiao's eyes were green with jealousy. What's so good about Tan Mo? In the car, Qin Murong told Qin Muxiao with a cold expression on her face, regardless of what's good, or even bad, about her, Muxiao, don't make things difficult for Tan Mo anymore. You want me to admit defeat. I can't take this lying down. Qin Muxiao raised her voice. She was so angry that she wanted to smash something. At least, don't make things difficult for her on the surface. There is nothing we can do. She is being protected by Wei Zhiqian. 
you had been disgraced a great deal because Wei Zhiqian defended her last time. Even I had been implicated and got the impression that we were both unappreciated in the Qin family. If this happens again, we won't have any prestige in school anymore, Qin Murong said, trying to talk some sense to her sister. Are you asking me to submit to her? Qin Muxiao was indignant. In any case, Wei Zhiqian will graduate in less than three years. All his friends will graduate and leave as well, while Tan Mo will have to stay in Jixia Academy for many years, Qin Murong reminded her. By then, no one in the school will be able to protect her anymore. As for Qin Mai, Qin Murong had never taken her seriously. She was just a simple dot-minded idiot. You just have to endure another three years. Three years, can't you? Then after that, no matter how you deal with Tan Mo, she won't be able to fight back. Without Wei Zhiqian's support, she's nothing. Qin Murong had been unhappy with Tan Mo for a long time. However, she was more tolerant than Qin Muxiao. That's right. Three years later, without Wei Zhiqian and the others, let's see if Tan Mo can still behave arrogantly. Three years left. She could tolerate it for now. Tan Mo had no idea about the Qin sisters' intentions. Then again, she hadn't given them a second thought either. In Wei Zhiqian's study, Tan Mo saw pieces of paper on the coffee table, a fountain pen, and a bottle of ink. Uncle, what are you going to do? Tan Mo asked, confused. The contents in the textbooks are not that difficult for you. They will be easy for you to understand. At present, your main goal is to learn how to use a pen to practice your handwriting, Wei Zhiqian said. Tan Mo could write a lot of characters, and she could already write characters for daily use. Before she started kindergarten, he had early education. After she started kindergarten, he began to learn how to write. Due to her limited strength, her handwriting was a little crooked, which did not look good. However, she eventually mastered it. I'm still writing with a pencil. Tan Mo had never written with a pen before. In her previous life, as a little snow fairy, she did not know how to write and had never used a pen. Therefore, in this life, she was learning how to write from scratch. I expect that, by the end of the semester, you should be able to take the third dot grade exams. Wei Zhiqian explained, however, after the third year, Chinese and other subjects will be written with a pen. Only mathematics can be written with a pencil for now. Since you want to skip grades, you have to practice writing with a pen. Wei Zhiqian wrote his name on a paper. The two characters were neat. Try to write my name. Wei Zhiqian pushed the paper to Tan Mo. Tan Mo tilted her head and asked, Little uncle, why did you write your name? Wei Zhiqian paused for a moment. Then he said confidently, I'm your teacher and your elder, so you have to practice my name first to show your respect. Tan Mo was speechless. Don't think that because I am a six-dot-year dot old, I am gullible. Chapter 42 You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio. Blow it for me, practice writing my name first, and then practice yours, Wei Zhiqian said. Why don't you practice mine first? Mine is just two words, so it's simpler, Tan Mo replied. Wei Zhiqian didn't know how to respond to her. Who said this little girl is cute? She is not obedient at all. No matter what you do, you can't just give up because of difficulties. Choosing the easy way means giving up. Precisely, my name is difficult. When you master writing my name, other characters will be much easier. Wei Zhiqian stuffed his pen into Tan Mo's hand and said, Stop talking nonsense. Let's practice. Tan Mo, yeah, right. Helpless, Tan Mo practiced writing obediently. Wei Zhiqian looked at her with satisfaction. He thought that if Tan Mo had mastered writing his name, once her brothers discovered that the characters written by their only sister were those of his name, they would have been immensely annoyed. As Tan Mo practiced, she felt a bit bored and tired. Her wrist and fingers were sore. She quietly put down the pen, shook her hand, and rubbed her face again. 
Tan Mo turned her head and saw Wei Zhiqian studying attentively. She realized that she hadn't observed Wei Zhiqian carefully before. His had good skin, and his pores were less visible. When he lowered his head to read a book, Tan Mo could see his long and thick eyelashes. Tan Mo thought, no wonder Qin Murong was so obsessed with Wei Zhiqian. Wei Zhiqian, as the next patriarch of the Wei family, was a rare find, not to mention that his looks were unrivaled. He was the epitome of skill and beauty. She wondered what he, an exceptional boy, would turn out to be like in the future. What are you looking at? Wei Zhiqian reached out and flicked her forehead. He did it lightly, so Tan Mo wasn't hurt at all. However, she still let out an, ah, while rubbing her forehead, pretending to be in pain. She rubbed the area a little forcefully, so it turned red. Little uncle, why did you do that for? Tan Mo's eyes welled up with tears, and she lowered her hand to let Wei Zhiqian see the redness on her forehead. I didn't use much strength, so why is it so red? Wei Zhiqian frowned, walked around Tan Mo, and examined the red spot on Tan Mo's forehead. It looked like a small area of plum juice in the snow. Wei Zhiqian wondered, are children's skin this sensitive? Tan Mo pouted as she thought, let's see if you dare to flick me in the future. It's not okay even if he didn't use much force. In her previous life, she had used this method to make her master carefully touch her petals every day, and her master didn't dare to use any strength. Is it red? Tan Mo raised her hand to touch the spot. Wei Zhiqian stopped her. Don't touch it. He was afraid it would get worse if she touched it. Looking at Tan Mo's teary eyes, Wei Zhiqian regretted what he did. He would not have flicked her had he known her skin was that sensitive. Who would have known that Tan Mo not only looked like a porcelain doll, but was also as fragile as porcelain dolls? She shouldn't be touched. Blow on it for me. Tan Mo pointed to her red forehead. Every time I get flicked, my parents and brothers take turns blowing on the sore area for me. Wei Zhiqian. He hadn't imagined this happening. Be of exactly how spoiled was Tan Mo at home. Hurry up, Tan Mo urged him. Wei Zhiqian lowered his head and blew lightly at Tan Mo's forehead. Blow gently. Tan Mo narrowed her eyes. Deep down, she was actually enjoying it. This was one of the best techniques of green tea art. From now on, he would have to pamper her and never dare to make a reckless move. Wei Zhiqian. Wei Zhiqian got tired of blowing, and the redness on her forehead subsided. He then spoke, why were you daydreaming instead of practicing calligraphy? Tan Mo. My wrists are sore. Tan Mo raised her right hand to show Wei Zhiqian. She continued, you see, at the place where I held the pen, it hurts. Wei Zhiqian looked at the side of the first knuckle of her middle finger. It was indeed red from holding the pen, and even her skin was a little wrinkled. It also looked as if blisters were about to form. If you write more, callus will eventually form. Thus, it won't feel uncomfortable anymore, Wei Zhiqian said. Since you have decided to skip grade levels, you should be able to bear this difficulty. I can bear it, Tan Mo said immediately. But my wrist is sore, so, little uncle, please rub it for me. Wei Zhiqian this little girl is high dot maintenance. Also, why is ink all over her hands? How does she practice writing anyway? Her fair and tender hands were small. They looked like small flowers when fully opened. Let's end it here today. Go wash your hands first. Wei Zhiqian went to the bathroom in the study with Tan Mo, then washed off all the ink on her hands. On their way to the Tan family's residence, Wei Zhiqian rubbed the high dot maintenance girl's wrist until they reached the place. Wei Zhiqian sighed as he was on his way home. How much did the Tan family spoil Tan Mo to make her so high dot maintenance? Because of Qin Murong's self dot restraint, except for the slight trouble on the first day of school, this semester passed by peacefully. It was now this semester's final exams. 
Tan Imo would eventually see the results of her study sessions with Wei Zhiqian. Although Tan Imo was very confident with her abilities, she still studied hard for this exam. Wei Zhiqian didn't let her skip too many grade levels at once. Tan Imo only jumped from the first grade to the third grade. Hence, she would take exams for the third grade. She didn't tell anyone about her plans to skip grade levels. Only Wei Zhiqian knew about it. So, Tan Imo was still in her current class, taking the exams with her classmates. The other students were taking exams for the first grade, and only she was given the third dot grade exams. Tan Imo prepared a fountain pen, a mechanical pencil, and an eraser early on. The first grade still used a pencil to answer questions, but Tan Imo had to use a pen to answer the Chinese test. Fortunately, she and Wei Zhiqian practiced calligraphy for one semester. Although her writing was not that beautiful, it was at least neat. For a six-year-old child, her writing was quite neat. At present, most children were still writing with pencils, and they couldn't write very well. Wei Zhiqian's insistence on letting Tan Imo use a fountain pen to practice calligraphy had borne fruit. Writing with a fountain pen was much harder than with a regular pen. After Tan Imo got used to writing with a fountain pen, when she switched to using a regular pen during the exams, it was easier. In order for everything to go smoothly, Tan Imo came to school early. No one was in the classroom when she arrived. After a while, a few classmates arrived sporadically. At this time, a female classmate, Li Xingyun, came in with a school bag and said to Tan Imo, Tan Imo, I just met Qin Mai, and she asked me to tell you to come to her class. Chapter 43 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. All broken, oh, okay. Tan Imo got up. Thank you. Li Xingyun smiled reluctantly. She kept her head down and walked to her seat. Tan Imo didn't think much about it. She assumed it might be because Qin Muxiao was there. Although everyone else, except Ming Yeqing, stopped following Qin Muxiao's command to isolate her, none of her classmates were friends with her. They didn't think they could afford to offend her, but they also didn't want to offend Qin Muxiao. They realized it wasn't good to get close to any of the two, so they just kept their distance. Tan Imo didn't care about what they think. She left the classroom to find Qin Mai. Tan Imo was at the door of Qin Mai's class, and Qin Mai was chatting with her classmates. Tan Imo shook her head and sighed. Qin Mai's popularity in class was much better than hers. But before she could call out to Qin Mai, Qin Mai saw her first and rushed to the door. Qin Mai was full of energy every day. She would run instead of walk everywhere whenever she could. M-O-M-O. Qin Mai ran to the door and said, the examinations will begin soon. Why are you here? Weren't you looking for me? Tan Imo was baffled. No. Who told you I was looking for you? Qin Mai asked curiously. Li Xingyun told me that you asked her to call me, Tan Imo explained. If I was looking for you, I would go to your class by myself. Besides, why would I trouble you to come over? Qin Mai couldn't think of anything else. Then Tan Imo said worriedly, Oh no, I'll go back first. What's the matter? Qin Mai saw that Tan Mo's expression immediately changed, so she hurriedly followed her. While walking, Tan Imo said, Li Xingyun said you asked her to call me, but you didn't. That means someone must have wanted me away to do bad things. She couldn't think of anyone else except Qin Muxiao. If it's Qin Muxiao, then she must be setting her up. Qin Mai immediately went to the classroom with Tan Imo. As soon as Tan Imo entered, her eyes spotted Qin Muxiao. Dot Qin Muxiao was talking and laughing with their classmates at this time. But Tan Imo felt that Qin Muxiao dared not to look at her because she was afraid of arousing her suspicion. To mask her guilt, she chatted and laughed loudly with other people with great effort. However, because it was too deliberate, she appeared to be more suspicious. Usually, when Tan Imo would look over, Qin Muxiao would return her gaze provocatively. 
Tan Mo looked at Li Xinyan again. Li Xinyan lowered her head guiltily when she saw Qin Mai enter with her. Tan Mo wasn't in the mood to confront Qin Muxiao and Li Xinyan. She went to check her things first. All her stuff were in her school bag, and nothing seemed to be amiss. Tan Mo checked the books again and found that there was no problem. Tan Mo frowned. Then, the stationary box on the desk caught her attention. This was the only thing left unchecked now. Tan Mo opened the stationary box, and its contents were also there. She was baffled, but she also trusted her instincts. She checked all her pens. The refill of the signed pen was there, as well as the eraser. As Tan Mo inspected her stuff, the class fell silent at some point. Qin Muxiao stopped chatting and laughing. Holding her breath, she watched Tan Mo nervously. She didn't expect that Tan Mo would go over her things meticulously. Has she found out already? Mo Mo, is there any problem? Qin Mai watched as Tan Mo inspected her stuff. I don't know. That's why I'm checking. Tan Mo quickly added, if there are no problems here, I'm sure something is wrong somewhere. Tan Mo was convinced that something wasn't right. Tan Mo picked up the mechanical pencil. She clicked it, but after a few tries, the lead broke and it fell out of the mechanical pencil. Tan Mo continued to click, but the pen's core was jammed, and all of the lead fell out. The problem is here, Tan Mo said in a deep voice. She took out a box of lead refills. When she opened it, she found that all the refills were broken into smaller pieces. She had brought only one mechanical pencil because she had refills. Of course, if Qin Muxiao was set on deliberately destroying her refills, it would be useless no matter how many pieces she brought. It's all broken. Qin Mai said, shocked. Her first reaction was to look at Qin Muxiao. No matter how naive Qin Mai was, she couldn't think of other people who would do such a thing except for Qin Muxiao. Tan Mo then picked up the fountain pen to check. She did not check the refill this time. Instead, she took out her notebook from her school bag and scribbled on it using the fountain pen. It turned out that although the pen was full, it couldn't make a single mark on the paper. Tan Mo thought that something was wrong with the nib, so she examined it closely. She found that the nib was clogged. Hence, the ink would not come out. Tan Mo put the pen down and said to Qin Mai, I have to go to the stationery store. These pens are no longer usable. There was a stationery shop in Jixia Academy to make it convenient for students to buy school supplies. But there is only 20 minutes left until the exam. You don't have much time. Qin Mai said, I still have a refill. I can give it to you. However, I don't have a fountain pen. The exam Qin Mai was going to take was the normal first dot grade exam. As a first dot grade student, she only needed a pencil to answer questions. How about we ask Wei Kelly if he has one? Qin Mai appeared disdainful when she mentioned Wei Kelly. But there was no other way. Wei Kelly was the closest to them. No, Tanimo said in a low voice. There is no need to despise him while asking him for help. Moreover, Tanimo didn't want to owe Wei Kelly, even for a small favor. As a little snow fairy in her previous life, it took her only a day to hone her skills for a thousand years. She believed that karma existed in this world. Today, if she asked Wei Kelly for help, no matter how small the favor was, she would have a karma connection with Wei Kelly. She would need to return the favor at some point. Even if she returned the favor, she would still be entangled with Wei Kelly. It would even be troublesome to get rid of Wei Kelly. I will run fast. I won't be long, Tan Mo said. Even if I return a little late, the teacher will still let me take the exam. I'll go with you, Qin Mai said and went with Tan Mo. You're about to take an exam. Why go with me? Tan Mo put the stationary box in her school bag just in case and carried it on her back. This was to prevent Qin Muxiao from playing dirty tricks again while she was not around. 
the two of us running to the stationery store will not make us faster nor will slow down time. It will be the same as me running to the store alone, Tan Mo tried to dissuade her. Chapter 44 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Qin Mu Xiao, drink this cup of tea, but I run fast. Usually, Qin Mai would run whenever she could. She would rather run than walk. This ability came in handy at present. If you can't run anymore, just leave it to me. I will run to the stationery store and buy it for you. Qin Mai dragged Tan Mo along as she ran. And you said that the teacher will not keep you from taking the exam just because you're a little bit late. This isn't the high school entrance examination or the college admissions test. Thus, the rules aren't that strict. Tan Mo was very touched. You really are a good friend, Mai. Don't be too formal with me, or else I will be angry. Chin Mai pulled Tan Mo, stop talking and run. The two of them ran with their short legs to the stationery store. As soon as Tan Mo left with Chin Mai, Chin Mu Xiao got up and warned the five people in the classroom, don't you dare say a word to Tan Mo about what happened. Whoever does so will be dead meat. The five people quietly lowered their heads. They did not dare to disagree with Qin Muxiao. Where are you two going? Why are you in a hurry? The exam is about to start. Tan Mo and Qin Mai were halfway to the store when they bumped into Wei Zhiqin. The examinations for the high school department were scheduled in two weeks after the elementary schools. Thus, Wei Zhiqin didn't have an exam today. All my writing tools are broken. I have nothing to use for the test. I have to go to the stationery store to buy new pens and pencils, Tan Mo hurriedly explained. She had to stop to answer Wei Zhiqian's question. Doing so consumed time. With your short legs, it would take you half an hour to go back and forth. Wei Zhiqian checked the time on his watch. What are you going to buy? Tell me, and I will get it for you. You two should go back to your classrooms first to prepare for the test. Really? Tan Mo's eyes widened. She was pleasantly surprised. With Wei Zhiqian's long legs, he walked faster than them running. Tan Mo thought that she would have peace of mind if she returned to the classroom. Would I lie to you? Wei Zhiqian raised his eyebrows and said, Tell me what to buy. Tan Mo took out her stationery box from her backpack and handed it to Wei Zhiqian. Except for the ruler and the eraser, buy one of each item. Wei Zhiqian opened the stationery box and frowned. Then he asked, why are all these broken? Someone broke them. Wei Zhiqian furrowed his brows when he heard this. Tan Mo was no longer in a hurry, so she explained what happened to Wei Zhiqian, before I left home. I had already checked all my stuff meticulously since I would be taking a test today. When I got to the classroom, I checked my stuff again. Then I went out of the classroom to look for my. When I got back, I found that all the pens and refills were broken. Chi Mai chimed in, MOMO was tricked. I did not ask MOMO to come and see me, but a classmate told her that I was looking for her, so she went to my class. While she was away, Someone ruined her stationery. Although Qin Mai had no proof, she was quite certain that Qin Muxiao did it. She was the only one in their class who held a grudge against Tan Mo. However, she did not dare say it since, after all, she had no evidence. I see. Wei Zhiqian nodded. Now you two should go back and take the exam. We will talk about everything later. Wei Zhiqian said to Tan Mo, Focus on the exam. Don't think of anything else while answering the questions. All right. Tan Mo nodded. My priority is the exam. Then, little uncle, I will have to bother you to buy the stationery. Tan Mo made a fist, bent her elbow, then bent her knees a little, and cheered, little uncle, go. Wei Zhiqian. It was just a small favor. Why does she make it seem like I was about to take part in a competition? Wei Zhiqian did not waste time. He turned around and ran to the stationery shop. Tan Mo and Qin Mai rushed back, 
but when they returned to their respective classrooms, they were still ten minutes late. The two then part ways, and Chin Mai entered her classroom without a fuss. The teacher only reminded her that she was ten minutes late, so she had to answer the questions as quickly as possible. Teacher, I'm sorry, my stationery was broken, so I went to buy new ones. Although it was winter, Tan Mo was sweating profusely. Her hair was a bit messy, and some loose strands were stuck to her face. Her small face was red from the cold wind. The cold wind blew on her as she ran. Currently, she was panting, trying to catch her breath as she spoke. Instead of homeroom teacher Huang, an invigilator was randomly assigned to their class. The invigilator said sternly, go and sit down. Don't make noise and interrupt other students who are taking the test. As soon as the invigilator finished speaking, Qin Muxiao suddenly objected, Teacher, Tan Mo was ten minutes late, which violated the test rules. I think she should not be allowed to take the test. Those rules are not set in stone. Besides, she has only been late for ten minutes. She can still take the test. No need to be strict, Ming Yeqing said. Qin Muxiao glared at Ming Yeqing. Why does he always go against me, she wondered. She was annoyed at him, but she kept her temper. Ming Yeqing stood up and looked at the invigilator earnestly. Teacher, this matter concerns a student's test scores, so please be cautious. The invigilator did not want to prevent Tan Mo from taking the exam for this reason. He was about to let Tan Mo go to her seat when Qin Muxiao spoke again, Teacher, she said that she went to buy stationery. Then where is her stationery? Qin Muxiao calculated the time. The time from which Tan Mo went out and returned was not enough for her to reach the stationery shop. She saw Tan Mo rushing to the shop with her own eyes. Wei Kelly's classroom was upstairs, and the two had not been together since the last commotion. So, she was pretty sure that Tan Mo had not bought stationery. Qin Muxiao thought that Tan Mo realized that she did not have enough time, so she went back instead. She probably wanted to take the opportunity to file a complaint to a teacher or something of the sort. It was precisely because of this that Qin Muxiao could not let Tan Mo succeed. Tan Mo, where is your stationery? Take it out. Qin Muxiao raised an eyebrow as she spoke. Stop making excuses. You probably went out to play. That's why you were late. Teacher, Qin Muxiao went on, facing the invigilator, if Tan Mo was late because she went out to play and not because she bought stationery, then I don't think she should be allowed to take the exam. And if she is lying, the problem will become more serious. Lying means she has a bad character. Qin Muxiao said loudly. Tan Mo was not worried at all about not being able to take the exam. Wei Zhiqian was the one who went to buy her stationery. Soon, Wei Zhiqian would come to bring the stationery over. With Wei Zhiqian there, would she still be unable to take the test? Tan Mo did not mind using this time to use some green tea techniques against Qin Muxiao. Qin Muxiao, it's okay if you don't want me to take the exam, but you are interrupting our classmates who are currently taking the test. They can't concentrate because of your bickering. Tan Mo held her school bag pitifully. She deliberately did so to give the appearance that she was still patient and kind despite being bullied by Qin Muxiao. Tan Mo continued, I will not take the test just so you stop kicking up a fuss and interrupting our classmates. I would stay outside and wait so our classmates can focus on the exam. Qin Muxiao, take this cup of green tea. Let's see how you will counter this cup of green tea. Chapter 45 Breaking the Rules You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 45 Chapter 45 Breaking the rules the students really couldn't concentrate on answering the questions, and they were even a little annoyed. If they fail the exam, they will have to repeat the grade. It's shameful to repeat a grade at Jixia Academy. But they did not expect that Tan Mo would actually give in. She offered to not take the exam in order to quiet Qin Muxiao. Dot Tan Mo was so kind. 
Also, during this semester, Qin Muxiao has been causing trouble, while Tan Mo has never caused trouble and was very low. Key. Even if Qin Muxiao tried to give her trouble, Tan Mo didn't stoop down to her level. Now, the sunlight from outside shone in and on Tan Mo's body. It seemed as if she was covered with a golden glow. Just looking at her made people feel warm and sweet in their heart. Li Xingyun raised her hand timidly and said, Teacher, let Tan Mo take the exam. Tan Mo is so kind, but she helped Qin Muxiao set Tan Mo up. Although she only distracted Tan Mo, she was also an accomplice. It was because Qin Muxiao threatened her, and she really couldn't afford to offend her. But, she has always been guilt ridden by her conscience. Tan Mo actually chose to give up taking the exam so as not to affect everyone else taking the exam. Li Xingyun mustered up the courage to speak first. With Li Xingyun taking the lead, the other students all said, Yes, teacher, let Tan Mo take the exam. Compared to Qin Muxiao, who gave Tan Mo a hard time and prevented everyone else from taking the exam with peace of mind, they liked Tan Mo much more. If it weren't for Qin Muxiao, they would be able to become good friends with Tan Mo. Qin Muxiao looked at everyone angrily. Why were they all helping Tan Mo? When did these people have such a good relationship with Tan Mo? How can we not follow the rules? Qin Muxiao spoke loudly to cover the other classmates' voices. What rules? You making a loud fuss during the exam and ignoring the teacher is what you mean by rules. Wei Zhiqian's voice came from the door. Everyone looked at the door in unison, and saw a tall figure being illuminated by the sunlight outside, making him hard to see. They could only see the golden glow around his body. Somehow, the feeling he gave off felt unexpectedly similar to that of Tan Mo. His shadow on the ground was stretched out, and as the figure moved forward, everyone finally saw the person who came. Wei Zhiqian came in. Teacher, I'm sorry. I'm here to send Tan Mo stationery. Wei Zhiqian explained, I just saw her running to the stationery store in a hurry, so I told her to come back first and I'll buy her. The invigilator said to Tan Mo with relief, It's good that the stationery has been bought. You must check your stationery next time. Don't make any mistakes like this again. Quickly sit down and take the time to take the exam. Yes. Thank you teacher. Tan Mo obediently agreed, but she did not immediately return to her seat and walked in front of Wei Zhiqian instead. Because of the height difference, raising her head became extremely difficult. Little uncle, thank you. With that said, Tan Mo hurriedly returned to her seat. Although she was absent just now, the test paper was still on her desk. Everyone, hurry up and continue the exam. The teacher urged, focus and concentrate on answering the questions. Wei Zhiqian glanced at Tan Mo, as if confirming again. Tan Mo was also looking at him. Seeing him look over, Tan Mo narrowed her eyes with a smile and waved at him. Wei Zhiqian couldn't help but smile, and then he left. Qin Muxiao kept watching, but from beginning to end, Wei Zhiqian never glanced at her. He came here this time to speak up for Tan Mo. Qin Muxiao gritted her teeth angrily, looked at the test paper full of questions, but was unable to concentrate on answering them for a long time. Tan Mo had already started focusing, and was carefully doing calculations. Because she was already ten minutes late and was troubled by Qin Muxiao, a lot of time was wasted. Now, her time was very tight. Tan Mo's exam questions were different from those of her classmates. They were much more difficult and more complicated. Tan Mo had focused all her attention on the questions since a while ago, and she didn't care about her surroundings at all. When the bell signaling the end of the exam rang, Tan Mo relaxed from a highly concentrated state of mind. She suddenly felt like she was on the verge of collapse. Her head throbbed and she was dazed. She wanted her mind to stay blank like this, and she didn't even want to say anything. The invigilator took the exam papers and went out. As soon as he left the academic building, he saw Wei Zhiqian waiting at the entrance. Teacher. 
Wei Zhiqian came forward. Wei Zhiqian, what's the matter? The teacher asked while holding the exam papers. Qin Muxiao disturbed the order of the examination room, so shouldn't she get credits deducted? Wei Zhiqian seemed to be asking, but in reality, he was reminding him. Jixia Academy not only looked at the final exam results, but also counted credits. These two factors would be combined to determine the average grade. The invigilator nodded and said, I will report this matter to the teachers on the discipline committee, then the teachers of the discipline committee will make a decision according to the regulations and determine how many points will be deducted. This was what Wei Zhiqian wanted. It didn't matter how many credits were deducted, but points had to be deducted. They couldn't let Qin Muxiao get away with making a fuss, right? They must let Qin Muxiao suffer the consequences. In the class, Tan Mo didn't know that Wei Zhiqian was blocking the way of the teacher outside, asking for an explanation. She recovered a little bit, and she heard Ming Yiching say, If I had arrived earlier, it would have been fine. I could have lent you a pen or something. It's okay, the exam has been successfully completed anyway, and I have enough stationery to deal with the following exams. Tan Mo put the stationery box in her school bag. Having learned a lesson from what happened in the morning, she must carry it with her this time. Even though there are a lot of people in the class so it wouldn't be easy for Qin Muxiao to make a move, Tan Mo felt that it was better to be careful. I'll ask Mai how she did on the exam. Tan Mo said with her school bag on her back. I'll go with you. Ming Yeqing didn't want to be harassed by Qin Muxiao. And he got along well with Tan Mo this semester, so he also became familiar with Qin Mai, and their relationship was pretty good as well. The two of them went to Qin Mai's class, which was next door, together. Unexpectedly, as soon as they went out, before they could look for Qin Mai, she was stopped by Li Xinyan. Tan Mo. Tan Mo stopped and waited for her. Walking up to Tan Mo, Li Xinyan whispered, Tan Mo, can I talk to you alone? I'll go to my first. Ming Yeqing said and went to the door of Qin Mai's class. Li Xingyin said, I'm sorry, Qin Muxiao asked me to lure you out in the morning. Although I didn't know what she intended to do, I also knew that she was definitely up to no good. It was just that I, didn't dare to offend her, why did you come to apologize to me? Tan Mo asked. Because I feel guilty. Li Xingyin said. Tan Mo shook her head. If I only had the Tan family and didn't have Uncle Zhiqian to back me up, would you still come to apologize to me? Li Xingyun was stunned, and she thought about it seriously, then said, I would. During the exam today, in order not to affect us, you would rather not take the exam. You are a kind person, but I helped others to bully a good person like you. My guilty conscience won't let me have peace of mind. Chapter 46 Pretentious You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 46. Chapter 46. Pretentious, then will you help her in the future? Tan Mo asked again, she will definitely threaten you again. I will find a way out. Li Xingyin said. I can't let my little uncle do anything for me. Him willing to be my backer is already my great luck, but I have no ability to ask for anything else. Therefore, if Qin Muxiao threatens you, I can't let him help you. Of course, whether it's you or someone else helping Qin Muxiao hurt me, I definitely have a way to resolve it. Tan Mo said confidently. Li Xingyin suddenly felt that Tan Mo was not only kind, but she was also very confident, and she was not the foolish sort of kind person. This sort of personality made people like her even more. I know. Li Xingyun smiled and said, Actually, our class, oh no, the whole school, everyone knows that only we can help ourselves. This is the first thing we have learned since childhood. Tan Mo thought about it for a while, then said, But don't worry, she probably won't threaten you guys into framing me again. What, do you mean? Li Xingyun asked in surprise. Could it be that Qin Muxiao was going to be unlucky? Don't think too much about it. Tan Mo smiled sweetly and said, Qin Muxiao will be fine. 
It has nothing to do with her. Li Xingyin became more confused as she listened, but Tan Mo stopped explaining, and went to find Qin Mai, who had come out and was chatting with Ming Yiching not far away. Don't ask me how I did on the exam. As soon as Tan Mo came over, Qin Mai hugged her head and said before she could speak. Don't pull your hair, or you'll be bald at a young age. Tan Mo grabbed Qin Mai's hand and stopped her from pulling her hair. Qin Mai quickly stopped pulling her hair and smoothed her hair carefully. How did you do on your exam? Qin Mai refused to let Tan Mo ask her, but instead, she asked Tan Mo. Qin Mai knew that Tan Mo's exam papers were different. Not bad, although the time was a little bit tight, I finished all the questions, and I knew how to answer all of them. I just didn't have time to check them again. I hope I didn't carelessly make a mistake when answering. Tan Mo said. It's okay, even if you made a few mistakes, it's okay. You don't need a perfect score to pass. Moreover, there are still several exams in other subjects. You have plenty of time to check on the remaining exams. Qin Mai wasn't just comforting her, but really did think so as well. The second exam was about to begin, so they hurried back to sit down again. After she came back, there was still some time before the second exam started. Qin Muxiao took the initiative to find Tan Mo and asked, Tan Mo, how did you do on the math test? Qin Muxiao did not finish answering the last big question. Previously, she wouldn't let Tan Mo take the exam and was wasting other people's time, but she was actually wasting her own time as well. She didn't have enough time to answer the questions. In addition, at the beginning, she couldn't concentrate on answering the question because she was distracted by anger for some time. But even without these factors, she wouldn't be able to answer the last big question. She could only try to answer the parts she did know, or else the question would be left blank and it would be unsightly. She didn't do well in the exam, but Tan Mo had less time to take the exam, so she certainly didn't do well on the exam either. However, Qin Muxiao still wanted to come to Tan Mo to confirm. Dot if she doesn't get clarification, she would feel uncomfortable. The time was too tight, and I don't feel confident about my answers. Tan Mo didn't want to tell Qin Muxiao the truth, so her expression was very pretentious. She feigned distress and worry on her face. Have you finished all your questions? Qin Muxiao asked again. It would be best if she didn't finish answering. Qin Muxiao herself didn't finish answering, and Tan Mo had less time than her to answer the questions, so she thought it was impossible for her to finish answering. Tan Mo said with a distressed expression, although I finished answering, during the latter portion, because I felt that there was not enough time, I just put in random answers since that would be better than leaving them blank. Tan Mo had a dejected expression on her face and she sighed deeply. No doubt I bombed the mathematics exam. Perhaps she won't get 100 points on the test. I can only work hard on the remaining subjects to score 100. How could Qin Muxiao know the true meaning of Tan Mo's words? She really thought that when Tan Mo said she didn't do well on the exam, she meant the same thing as her. She went back to her seat gleefully. On the subsequent exams, Tan Mo prevented Qin Muxiao from making trouble so the exams went smoothly. She knew how to answer all questions, especially on the Chinese exam. She had heard her master recite those poems in classical Chinese literature so many times that she already remembered them deeply. She didn't need Wei Zhiqian to teach them to her. She might be more proficient in classical Chinese literature than the teacher was. The only tricky subject was English. Fortunately, although the Tan family spoiled her, they still let her learn what she should learn. From early childhood education to kindergarten, she was immersed in an English-speaking environment, so she had a good foundation. There was no problem with her oral English, and she could speak it fluently. This semester, with Wei Zhiqian, she studied English grammar and vocabulary that would appear on the written test. However, the English curriculum at Jixia Academy was not that rigorous, and it was still at the ordinary elementary school level. Obviously, Jixia Academy's foreign language curriculum was normal, 
and the requirements weren't particularly strict. Of course, although Jixia Academy's foreign language requirements weren't particularly strict, it was at the same level as most schools. No matter what, the students of Jixia Academy wouldn't lower their standards for these subjects outside of class. And Tan Mo was also wondering, was it because she had retained some of her abilities as a little snow fairy in her previous life that in this life, her memory was really outstanding? What she originally told her family members was just an excuse. But through the tutoring sessions this semester, Tanemo found that her memory was really amazing. As long as she reads something carefully, she can remember it. There is no need for her to work hard to memorize the text, grammar, or vocabulary. Tanemo can't help thinking, is this also an ability passed down from her previous life? After all, after practicing, having a good memory was only natural. But no matter what, Tan Mo was very happy to be able to retain this ability. Finally, she finished the last subject. After Tan Mo handed in the paper, she breathed a long sigh of relief, then walked out while massaging the back of her neck to wait for Qin Mai to come out to the corridor in front of the classroom. She waited for just a while before she saw Qin Mai jumping around with an expression as carefree as ever. Wait, Ming Yiching. Seeing Ming Yiching passing by, Qin Mai hurriedly stopped him. What? Ming Yiching stopped and asked her curiously. Come, I happen to have something to discuss with you all. Qin Mai said. Ming Yiching smiled and nodded quickly. Okay. The three of them walked out together. There weren't many people around, and their distance was far, so they couldn't hear them. Qin Mai whispered, I thought about it, and decided that we can't let Qin Muxiao off so easily. What about Qin Muxiao? Ming Yeqing still didn't know what Qin Muxiao did. Chapter 47 Tan Mo already has a childhood sweetheart so early on you are listening at novel full audio. Chapter 47 Chapter 47 Tan Mo already has a childhood sweetheart so early on Mo Mo's stationery was destroyed by someone on purpose. Qin Mai briefly talked about the matter, then turned to ask Tan Mo, have you not told him? Tan Mo shook her head. No, she was not a tattletale. She didn't intend to tell Ming Yeqing. Unexpectedly, after Ming Yeqing listened, his handsome face sank. You actually didn't tell me about such a big thing. Is it because you don't regard me as a friend? Ming Yeqing was sad as he said, I thought I was your friend. After speaking, Ming Yeqing turned around and left. He was actually ignoring Tan Mo and Qin Mai. Ah. Tan Mo quickly grabbed Ming Yeqing's arm as she said, No, I didn't hide it from you on purpose. Qin Mai quickly took Ming Yeqing's other arm. Wait. Ming Yeqing stopped and turned to look at Tan Mo and Qin Mai with a sullen expression on his face. Tan Mo quickly explained, It's because I don't have evidence. Although we have guessed who did it, we don't have evidence. How can I say it? I can't just accuse her with no evidence, right? Tan Mo lowered her head. I was going to resign myself to my unluckiness. Ming Yeqing's expression finally moved a little. But he raised the eyebrows on his handsome face and still asked, Then why did you say it again today? Isn't it because I'm unwilling to let it go? We have to expose Qin Muxiao. Qin Mai said in an indignant tone of voice. Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng were walking when suddenly, they saw Tan Mo and Ming Yeqing pulling and tugging. Qin Mufeng raised his eyebrows, then said amusedly, Yo, Tan Mo already has a childhood sweetheart so early on. The Ming family's boy is quite good, and he's a good match with Tan Mo. Wei Zhiqian said with a dark expression on his face, at her young age, what good match. Pulling and tugging like that isn't proper. How come another boy appeared? Qin Mufeng laughed as he said, look at you acting like a guardian. You seem like those three brothers in the Tan family. Do you really treat Tan Mo as your own niece? Children are still too immature, so no matter what, they have to wait until they reach adulthood. Wei Zhiqian said aloofly, it's not suitable to do this kind of thing now. 
wasn't Wei Kelly so. Things seemed to be going pretty good between them originally. Then, various incidents exposed his unreliability and uselessness. As soon as Wei Zhiqin finished speaking, he saw Qin Mai grabbing Ming Yiching's other arm. Wei Zhiqian immediately became heartened and said, Yo, perhaps Mai and Ming Yiching are childhood sweethearts. Look at the relationship between the two, it seems really good. Qin Mufeng was teasing him in amusement just now, but when he saw that his sister was actually holding the boy's arm, his face suddenly became sulky. How indecent! Qin Mufeng said angrily and strode over. Do you two think Qin Muxiao did it? Ming Yeqing had just asked this sentence when the two little girls who were holding his arm in front of him disappeared. They were replaced by two pairs of long legs. Ming Yeqing looked up from these two long legs. Qin Mufen was holding Qin Mai and Wei Zhiqian was holding Tan Imo. Little uncle. Brother. Ming Yeqing. What's going on? Brother, let me go down quickly. This is in school. My classmates will laugh at me. Qin Mai kicked her legs and wanted to get down. If he wanted to hug her he could just do it at home. There were so many people in the school so it was very embarrassing to be held by her brother. Little uncle, why are you here? Tan Imo doesn't care what other people think as long as she has Wei Zhiqian's affinity. As a little girl, what are you doing pulling and tugging at a boy? Wei Zhiqian said sternly. Tan Imo, she just grabbed Ming Yiching's arm, so what pulling and tugging? I am friends with Ming Yiching. Moreover, she didn't regard Ming Yiching as someone of the opposite gender. Friends are genderless. Even if you are friends you still can't. Men and women are different. Wei Zhiqian said coldly, you can't hold the arms of someone of the opposite gender casually. You have to keep a distance, don't you know? Wei Zhiqian suddenly became vigilant. It is indeed time to educate Tan Imo, or else, she might be taken advantage of by a scumbag in the future. Although you are still young, as a girl, you must always be vigilant towards boys. Wei Zhiqian decided to brainwash Tan Imo from today onward. Tan Imo, wasn't it too early to talk about this? Wei Zhiqian lowered his head to warn Ming Yiching, as a boy, you must also be a gentleman, and take the initiative to keep your distance from girls. Ming Yiching. He didn't think about it. Little uncle, let me go down quickly. Tan Imo whispered. What? You used to clamor for me to hug you when you saw me in the past. Now that you have new friends, you're going to ignore me. Wei Zhiqian thought, he really couldn't tell that Tan Imo was actually so heartless. No, Tan Imo said in a low voice, it's just that if this was seen by my classmates, they would laugh at me for being hugged at such an age. Then, how would I be able to hold my head up with dignity in front of my classmates? Then, you won't let me hug you anymore. Wei Zhiqian raised his eyebrows and asked. How did dignity get dragged into the conversation? This little girl was quite a talker. I do want hugs, I do. Tan Imo said, but in school, I still have to keep a low profile. My little uncle's hugs are more stable than those of my older brothers. In order to coax Wei Zhiqian, Tan Imo dismissed her older brothers without hesitation. Of course. After Wei Zhiqian heard these words, he hugged her tighter as he said, otherwise, how could I be your little uncle? But upon facing Tan Mo's pleading eyes, Wei Zhiqian still put Tan Imo down. Qin Mai was also put down by Qin Mufeng. Wei Zhiqian put Qin Mai in the middle of Ming Yeqing and Tan Imo, just like this, keep your distance. Qin Mufeng pulled Qin Mai away again, as if Mai isn't a girl. Ming Yeqing. Is he some kind of beast? These two people have crossed the line. I know, brother. We still have something to attend to, so we will be leaving first. Qin Mai waved her hand and quickly took Tan Mo's hand. With her other hand, she was about to pull Ming Yeqing, but she thought of Qin Mufeng's words, especially since Qin Mufeng was still staring at her. Qin Mai Gang retracted her hand that was half stretched out, 
and hurriedly beckoned Ming Yeqing without making physical contact. Let's go. Afraid of being stopped by Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng, she acted as if there was a dog chasing behind her. She pulled Tan Mo, beckoned to Ming Yeqing, then ran away. Wei Zhiqian narrowed his eyes as he said, What is the matter with the three of them? They're so sneaky. What matter was she willing to tell that rascal Ming Yeqing but not him? Qin Mufeng also felt that he could solve it more quickly and effectively than Ming Yeqing could. What can Ming Yeqing do? Without telling her own brother, she went to find Ming Yeqing. Qin Mufeng's gaze was fixed on the backs of the three people, and he said, Just follow behind we'll know. Chapter 48 You can train him you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 48 You can train him translator. Nyo I. Bo Studio Editor Nyo I. Bo Studio with the three children's eagerness to carry out their plan, they didn't notice Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng trailing behind. After all, the two were thoroughly trained in the Lanshan compound. The children of the eight great clan, especially the direct descendants, will be sent to the Lanshan compound for training during childhood. One purpose was for physical fitness, and the other was for self-protection abilities. The children of the eight great clans' distant relatives were also sent to Lanshan compound for training. However, their training was different from the direct heirs like Wei Zhiqian. Their training was more rigorous, the kind where they were constantly in life and death situations. But once an individual passed the assessment of the Lanshan compound and became one of them, Great benefits awaited that individual, especially Lan Shan Compound's connections. Thus, Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng, who underwent such extensive training, managed to trail behind the three kids without getting discovered. The two of them followed Tan Mo, Qin Mai, and Ming Keqing into a Hagen Daz store. Qin Mufeng and Wei Zhiqian entered the store discreetly and sat in an inconspicuous corner. Qin Mai ordered, We want a hot pot ice cream. Wei Zhiqian said to Qin Mufeng, Mai also ordered a big hot pot ice cream. I saw it, Qin Mufeng said helplessly, we seldom let her eat ice cream at home in winter, even if there is heating in the room. Turns out she was secretly eating ice cream outside. But it's not like her allowance can be reduced. It's not convenient for girls to have no allowance. Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng had awakened patriarchal abilities. Thus, they were the next patriarchs of the Wei and Qin clans respectively. The patriarchs of the eight great clan were different from that of ordinary families. In each generation of the eight great clan, a person's patriarchal ability that would usually develop during his childhood or his teenage years at the latest. That the one with an awakened patriarchal ability would automatically become the next patriarch. It wasn't a family choice. It was destiny. Moreover, if something happened to the person with an awakened patriarchal ability, such as death, there would be no second awakening in that generation. This was to prevent someone in the family who was aspiring to be the patriarch from killing the one with an awakened patriarchal ability. The one with an awakened patriarchal ability would be nurtured by the entire clan with all their resources. To awaken one's patriarchal ability, the individual had to be exceptional. None of the people with awakened patriarchal abilities were mediocre. Wei Zhiqian had excellent hearing, while Qin Mufeng had excellent eyesight. They weren't exactly clairvoyant, but close enough. Wei Zhiqian could control his hearing ability. He could choose what he wanted to listen to. When he focused, he could hear people's conversations from a distance. If he didn't actively use this ability in his daily life, he would still have good hearing at best and he could cancel out unwanted sounds. As for Qin Mufeng, his ability did not require to be actively or passively triggered. But in order to complement this ability, he took the initiative to learn lip.reading. This way, even if he couldn't hear what people were saying, he could still understand what they meant by reading their lips. Qin Mufeng was conveniently located as he could see Tan Mo's and Qin Mai's faces. He could also read Qin Mai's lips. When the hot pot ice cream was served, Qin Mai and Tan Mo disregarded everything else and hurriedly took a bite first. 
Ming Yeqing said helplessly, let's get down to business. Are you too sure that Qi Muxiao did it? I am pretty sure, though I have nothing to prove it. Qi Mai nodded. Tan Imo added, apart from her, I can't think of anyone who hates me as much as she did. Although our classmates don't interact with me, they have no reason to harm me. Moreover, Li Xingyun also admitted to me that she lied to me because Qin Muxiao threatened. I'm baffled. My brother clearly said last time that Qin Muxiao doesn't represent the Qin family at all and that what she said did not represent the entire family. Why are your classmates still so afraid of her? Qin Mai said angrily. I can probably guess. Ming Yeqing also scooped up some ice cream, dipped it in the hot chocolate, and waited for the chocolate to fully coat the ice cream before stuffing it to his mouth again. Last time, after your older brother made that statement, our classmates weren't that friendly towards Qin Muxiao anymore. But, everyone knows a little about the Qin family. After they told their respective families about what happened, they found out from their parents that Qin Muxiao's family is not that insignificant in the Qin clan and still has some authority. Speaking of which, although your brother does not regard Qin Muxiao, our classmates dare not to really ignore her. I think the reason Li Xingyun was forced to do it was that if Qin Muxiao's family wanted to teach Li Xingyun's family a lesson, they wouldn't have to go through the Qin family, or even let your parents and brothers know. She could do it without them knowing it, so Li Xingyun agreed. Didn't she apologize to MOMO afterwards? It showed that she was actually unwilling, but she didn't dare to take the risk. Our classmates have no grudge against MOMO, so they would probably be unwilling to harm her for no reason. However, they also have their families to think about. Of course, I am not saying that they did the right thing or that they should be forgiven. I just feel that children from prominent families are too scrupulous. They won't dare to gamble, and they are easily threatened. Your brother can't dispel their fears with just a few words. Qin Mufeng couldn't see Ming Yeqing's face, so he couldn't lip dot read what he said. However, Wei Zhiqian heard everything and relayed them to Qin Mufeng. He's quite a sensible person. Qin Mufeng chuckled as he said, he can see things clearly, and he has his own principles. He's much better than your nephew. You can train him. He could be a backup for your niece. Dot. Wei Zhiqian shot him a blank expression and said, Wait until they are all grown. Dot ups. They are still too young. What's the point of saying such things now? If he is really that excellent, they will be a good match. I'm thinking about finding evidence to expose Qin Muxiao. Qin Mai asked Tan Mo, Mo Mo, do you remember who was in the classroom when you went out? except Qin Muxiao. I remember that apart from Qin Muxiao and Li Xingyun, there were five others. Tan Emo identified each of them. Ask them out and let them reveal who did it. They were in the classroom, so they must have seen it, Qin Mai said. I am different from Qin Muxiao. I can promise that Qin Muxiao will never retaliate against them. This is a trivial matter. I will talk to my parents and brother when I get home. They will definitely agree to my request. Chapter 49 The one Tan Mo admired the most you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 49 The one Tan Mo admired the most, do you want Ming Yeqing to ask them? Tan Mo immediately guessed what Qin Mai meant. Oh, Mo Mo, you understand me so well. Qin Mai hugged Tan Mo happily. They were on the same wavelength. Qin Mai broke away from their embrace and said to Ming Yeqing, if Tan Mo and I were to ask them about what they know, they would definitely refuse. They know that we're not on good terms with Qin Muxiao. But you are different. Qin Muxiao didn't ostracize you. If you ask them about what happened, they won't think that it is because of MOMO. Qin Mufeng smiled and took a sip of his tea and said, my sister is so smart. Although she was usually careless, at critical moments, she was quite clever. Didn't MOMO also think of it? Wei Zhiqian said, not one to be outdone. In this case, let's talk to them as soon as possible. We have to go to school again when the scores are announced. 
If it is delayed until after winter break, then I'm afraid we won't be able to do much about it. Ming Yeqing turned to Tan Emo and said, What do you think? He thought that Tan Emo should let her thoughts be known since the incident involved her. Do you want to expose Qin Muxiao? Qin Mai chimed in, eagerly waiting for Tan Mo's response. Qin Mai wanted to be sure that they were on the same page. Of course, Tan Emo replied. We had no evidence previously. Although our classmates witnessed what Qin Muxiao did, they refused to tell on her. We had no other means to expose her. She couldn't exactly use Wei Zhiqian. I didn't expect that you would have the Qin family to support me. After all, our classmates wouldn't benefit from telling us that Qin Muxiao did it, so they would rather stay out of it. So, you never thought of asking me for help. Qin Mai was sad. Tan Emo hurriedly hugged Qin Mai's arm as she said, No, I just thought that Qin Muxiao uses the Qin family's influence to bully people every day. I don't want others to think you are like that as well. And, won't your family scold you once they find out? Tan Emo looked at Qin Mai and continued, I don't want you to be scolded for helping me. Don't make things difficult for yourself. No, Qin Mai said decisively. She gave off a proud vibe. My parents and brothers are not unreasonable. I am the heiress of the Qin family. I will bear my responsibilities in the future, so I also have the right to enjoy the benefits that being part of the Qin clan entails. Furthermore, Qin Muxiao was at fault, I wasn't. Helping others who are being threatened by Qin Muxiao will also improve the Qin family's reputation. Qin Mai raised her head proudly as she said, Moreover, you are my friend, and Qin Muxiao did you wrong. By doing so, she isn't taking me or my family seriously. Won't that make our family a joke in other people's eyes? Wei Zhiqian chuckled as he said, Mai has changed quite a bit. She put to heart the words I've said to her. Qin Mufeng smiled with relief as he said, This girl is one of us. She has all the reason to be proud. Who thought that bullying people was a sign of strength? When Qin Muxiao bullied other people, had she ever considered how it would reflect on the Qin family? Qin Mai had considered it. Qin Mufeng sat upright, felt proud of his sister. Mai, you are so kind. Tan Mo's eyes welled up as she held Qin Mai's arm while looking at her affectionately. Meeting Tan Mo's gaze, Qin Mai felt that Tan Mo admired her the most and that she could hold up half the sky for Tan Mo. Qin Mai suddenly felt confident. She downed a cup of tea, and then said to Tan Mo, I know that you are worried that things might get difficult for me at home. I assure you, it won't. Now, are you willing to expose Qin Muxiao? Tan Mo's little face was stuck in Qin Mai's arms. Looking up at her, she nodded. I am. Of course, I am. Ming Yeqing looked at the two girls in front of him. He felt they didn't need his assistance after all. Ming Yeqing cleared his throat and reminded them, since it's decided, let's strike while the iron is hot. Just ask them to come here, Tan Mo said. We can still accommodate a few people here at our table, so we don't need to transfer to another place. I agree. Then Qin Mai urged Ming Yeqing to call their five classmates. Tan Emo recalled that aside from Qin Muxiao, three girls and two boys were inside the classroom when she left to find Qin Mai. Li Xingyun was among them. Ming Yeqing contacted each of them via WeChat. Li Xingyun, a few of my classmates and I are eating ice cream at Hagen, Daz to celebrate the holiday. Would you like to come and join us? Mu Zi, a few of my classmates and I are eating ice cream at Hagen, Daz to celebrate the holiday. Would you like to come and join us? Ming Yeqing sent out the same message to their five classmates. Although Qin Muxiao got annoyed with Ming Yeqing because of Tan Emo, it didn't affect Ming Yeqing's popularity in class. Despite their young age, they were already obsessed with good looks. Ming Yeqing was the most handsome boy in the first grade. Qin Muxiao was angry because Ming Yeqing chose to play with Tan Emo, not with her. Then again, deep down, Qin Muxiao still liked Ming Yeqing. 
she wanted to snatch Ming Yiching from Tan Imo. Ming Yiching was on good terms with his classmates. He wasn't negatively impacted by his association with Tan Imo. Meanwhile, all their five classmates readily agreed. It's done. They will come soon, Ming Yiching said. The ice cream shop was near the school. All five had drivers to take them to the shop, so they got to the place shortly after. They told their drivers to wait for them at the parking lot. Qin Mai, Tan Mo, and Ming Keqing had done the same earlier. Mu Zi was the first to arrive. She was surprised to find that aside from Ming Keqing, Qin Mai and Tan Mo were also there. Mu Zi panicked. Ming Yeqing, didn't you say you were eating ice cream with our classmates? Mu Zi asked. Aren't we his classmates? Qin Mai said, pointing to her and Tan Imo. I, I suddenly remembered that there is something else I need to do, so I have to go first, Mu Zi said. He immediately turned around and was about to leave when Tan Imo grabbed his arm. Mu Zi, perhaps you misunderstood, Tan Imo said while leading Mu Zi to their table. We are just gathering to eat ice cream, chat, and relax. That's it. Why are you so nervous? Ming Yeqing also messaged others, and they will be here in a while, Tan Mo said with a smile. Mu Zi didn't know why, but upon seeing Tan Mo's fair little face, he felt a little at ease. He remembered how she offered to not take the exam so as not to interrupt them. For some reason, he let Tan Mo lead him to their table and sit down. By the time the other four saw what was going on, they couldn't leave anymore even if they wanted to. Chapter 50 Two Protectors You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 50 Two Protectors Translator Nyo I.B.O. Studio Editor Nyo I.B.O. Studio Li Xinyan was the last one to come. When she received Ming Yeqing's invitation, she already had a hunch on what that was all about. She hesitated at first, contemplating not showing up, but she eventually decided to come. Dot upon seeing Tan Mo and the other two, Li Xingyun did not appear as surprised and guilty as the other four, and she sat down without saying anything. One of the boys, Gu Xiaonan, took the initiative to say, enough with the excuse that you're celebrating the holiday when you only invited the five of us. If you have anything to say, just say it. Tan Mo discreetly pulled Qin Mai's arm, who wanted to speak, and said, then I'll say it precisely. This was her business after all. Qin Mai was willing to help her, and she was very grateful. However, she couldn't let Qin Mai speak up for her when this had nothing to do with her. Qin Mai had done enough for her. Green tea was not meant to be served to people close to her. Before the math exam yesterday morning, Li Xingyun told me that Mai was looking for me. I was tricked to leave the classroom. However, I learned that Mai wasn't looking for me. Tan Mo looked serious as she continued, Li Xingyun knew whether or not Mai was really looking for me. But, I don't want to pursue this matter now. Tan Mo saw that Li Xingyun was startled. She smiled at Li Xingyun and went on, I just want to know. Who ruined my stationery while I was out? The five of you were in the classroom at the time, so you must have all seen it. Tan Mo's gaze swept at the five of them. After you left, I went to the bathroom, so I didn't see it, another boy, Yu Xian, said as an excuse. Tan Mo smiled and shook her head. Yu Xian, do I need to remind you that it isn't good to lie? You must take responsibility for your actions. You will inherit the family business in the future. You should be responsible as early as now. Although I was at Mai's classroom at the time, it wasn't like I couldn't see who's coming and going in our classroom. Tan Mo looked and sounded calm. I didn't see you come out of the classroom at the time, Tan Mo quickly added with a smile. Yu Xian, lying won't do you any good, Qin Mai chimed in. A man should own up to his actions. Yu Xian lowered his head in shame because of Qin Mai's scolding. Qin Mai proudly raised her chin and urged her classmates, if you saw who did it, just say it. I can guarantee that nothing will happen to you. Seeing them hesitate, 
Chi Mai continued, her eyebrows raised, you don't believe me. You're all afraid when Qin Muxiao threatens you, but you don't care when I say something. Could it be that I'm not as good as that girl, Qin Muxiao? Qin Mai sounded as if she was trying to distance herself from Qin Muxiao by emphasizing the words, that girl. All five of them were still hesitant. It was Qin Mai who was bad. Mouthing Qin Muxiao, and they did not dare to refute her. If word got out, they would be the unfortunate ones. The five of them shook their heads in unison, but they did not dare to speak. It was as if they were afraid that someone was secretly recording everything and would use it against them. Chi Mai felt that this was getting boring. She sighed and said, What if I use the Qin family as a guarantee? Tell me if anyone dares to touch you or your family's company because of this, and my family will immediately step in. Now, are you willing to talk? One girl, Su Huayan, had not expressed her thoughts yet. After pondering for a while, she said in a low voice, But, do your words have any authority? Don't get me wrong. I don't mean to say you are inferior to Qin Muxiao. The last time young master Qin expressed his opinion, we found out that you do not support Qin Muxiao's way of doing things. But the reason we are apprehensive is that if Qin Muxiao wants to punish our family, she does not need to go through the Qin family and let your family know. Her parents can act privately. After all, it's not as if they are going to bankrupt our family. To teach us a lesson, her parents can do it quietly. We don't want to trouble our family about school matters. Even if it is just a small issue, it will still affect our families. Ming Yeqing expected this kind of response from Su Huayan. From Qin Muxiao's temperament, we can see that her family spoils her very much, so she probably has no boundaries, Yu Xian chimed in. Thus, even though she is wrong, her family may not discipline her. But you are different. You never bully people. From the way you and your brother behave, it can be seen that your family is very strict. In this regard, can you really convince your parents to do something concerning a trivial matter as this? Su Huayan, in airing her thoughts, implicitly admitted that Qin Muxiao ruined Tan Mo's stationery. Therefore, Yu Jingxian did not hide it anymore. Upon hearing Su Huayan's words, Qin Mai was not as confident as she was earlier. Could she really convince her parents? She can. Qin Mufeng suddenly appeared behind Qin Mai. Even if she can't, I can. Even if the Qin family doesn't make a move, the Wei family will do something about it. Wei Zhiqian touched Tan Mo's head as he said, My words have weighed in my family. Brother. Little uncle. Yu Zhengxian and the others did not know how to react. They all looked at Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng blankly. They were indeed worried that Qin Mai's words would not have weight. But if Qin Mufeng came forward to assure them, things would be different. Not to mention, there was also Wei Zhiqian. Even if Qin Mufeng did not show up, Wei Zhiqian's assurance would be more than enough. Moreover, Wei Zhiqian's and Qin Mufeng's presence were too intimidating. At this time, Qin Mufeng was standing behind Qin Mai, and Wei Zhiqian was behind Tan Imo. They were like the two girls' protectors. So, are you now willing to tell us everything? Wei Zhiqian asked, his hand lightly rested on Tan Mo's head. He wanted to rest on Tan Mo's shoulders. But it was not possible because Tan Mo was too short. His hands could not reach her shoulders. Tan Mo suddenly felt something heavy on the top of her head, and she did not dare to look up. She did not want her due to be messed up. She could only sit still. The five of them exchanged glances, and then made up their minds. Li Xingyun was the first to speak, Qin Muxiao ruined Tan Mo's stationery. After Li Xingyun spoke, the remaining four followed suit. They were worried that if they did not speak up immediately, Wei Zhiqian and Qin Mufeng would not protect them. Gu Xiaonan rushed to say, after Tan Mo left the classroom, Qin Muxiao broke all of Tan Mo's lead refills. Then she saw a fountain pen, Mu Zi joined. Although we don't use fountain pens, 
perhaps she just wanted to make sure that Tan Mo wouldn't have anything to use, she did something to clog the nib. Thus, the ink wouldn't come out when Tan Mo tried to write using the pen.